Hey everyone, this is Rowan Shaw with BestEconTutor.com, and in this video, we'll be talking about excludability and rivalry, the free rider problem, and public goods. Now, any good in the world could either be rival or non-rival. What that means is whether one person consumes the good or not, whether that affects somebody else's ability to consume it. So here's an example of a good that's not rival. Well, the military. Me being protected by the US military doesn't really affect anyone else's ability to be protected by the US military. Same with air, you know? So those are non-rival good. One person's ability to use it doesn't affect the others. So rival goods are, you know, for example, pizza. If I'm eating a slice of pizza, you can't also eat that same slice of pizza. That's what makes that rival. So unrelated to that, any good can also either be excludable or non-excludable. Excludable means that you can prevent people who didn't pay from, uh, from using it. And non-excludable is whether they pay for it or not, it's possible for them to be able to consume it. So that's what that is. So now any good in the world then can fall into one of four categories. Either it's rival and excludable, and rival and non-excludable, or non-rival and excludable, or non-rival and non-excludable. So up until now, in this whole course, we've only talked about goods that fall into this category. And those are called private goods. So everything we've talked about in the whole class, private goods. That's what that is. So let's take pizza, for example, as I was um, saying. That's rival in that if I'm having it, you can't also have that same slice of pizza. And it's also excludable because you can't just find pizza for free or use it unless you paid for it. So that's what made it, makes it excludable. Now, what's an example of a good that's rival? So, you know, one person using it still affects somebody else's ability to use it, but it's not excludable, meaning anybody could use it. Well, for example, a public library. You know, if you and I were to take a road trip, go all the way to Kansas or something, and go to a public library and sit on a table and study economics, technically, nobody can stop us. We could do it. It's non-excludable. You can't exclude non-payers from just going in and using the space, even though, you know, I've never paid tax, uh, taxes in Kansas. But either way, uh, non-payers can still use that good. And so, it's non-excludable, but it is rival because if we're using a specific table in the library, somebody else can't use that same table because at the end of the day, there's a limited number of tables, so it's possible for it to get crowded and filled. So that is an example of what's called a common resource. So a public library is a, an example of a common resource. If you were to have a, you know, a swimming pool in your community or something that anyone can use, that's an example of a common resource. So common resource goods are not excludable but rival. Now, what about a good that's non-rival but excludable? Well, the name for that is called artificially scarce. An artificially scarce good, let's think about what this means. This means that it's excludable, meaning if you don't pay for it, you can't use it. Only payers, people who pay for it, can use it. But it's uh, non-rival, meaning whether I use it or you use it, you know, uh, doesn't, it doesn't, me using it doesn't affect your ability to use it. An example of uh, an artificially scarce good here is Netflix. For example, me watching a particular show on Netflix really doesn't influence your ability to watch that same show on Netflix at the same time if you wanted to. So it's really non-rival. So there's that, but it's also excludable because if you didn't pay for it, you actually can't use it. You can exclude people. And you can imagine where the name comes from. Because of that, really, it's uh, marginal cost is zero. It costs nothing to make an extra unit of, to have one other person on Netflix. And so it's artificially scarce though because even though the marginal cost is zero, you know, the price isn't zero. You're not, it's not available for free. You can charge $7.99 a month for Netflix and so it's excludable. And so that's what makes it artificially scarce. And finally, a good that's non-rival and non-excludable, that's called a public good. And so a public good is something like the military, for example, where it's non-rival, me being protected doesn't affect your, you being uh, protected, but it's also non-excludable. You can't say, hey, you are not going to be protected by the U.S. military, even, you know, if 
because you didn't pay taxes or something. Technically, everyone's protected. So at the end of the day, it's not excludable and non-rival. And public goods are usually something that the government, that it's sufficient usually for the government to provide that. Now let's talk a bit about what the free rider problem is. It's basically a situation that arises when you have a non-excludable good. So that means you can't prevent people uh, from using your good. Now, that's just saying, let's say fireworks. You know, if you were to light a bunch of fireworks and, you know, and to enjoy and, well, you can't really stop other people around you from enjoying it as well. You know, it's not excludable. So even though they didn't really pay for it, the, you know, they're still getting to enjoy it. So that's, that's the problem. The problem is that, you know, free rider, other people get to enjoy it. So now, if everyone in a town is thinking about getting fireworks, usually the problem is anyone on their own is probably going to think something like, ah, you know, somebody else is probably going to get fireworks, so I don't need to really pay for them. I'll just get to free ride and enjoy them. But then the problem with that is usually everybody thinks like that, and so nobody ends up getting uh, fireworks, and so that's sort of a problem that arises. And finally, let's talk a little bit about what public goods are and how you solve problems involving them. Now, kind of like the free rider problem, the issue is that, you know, not everyone's gonna, you're not gonna make the efficient decision if everyone's just thinking one individual at a time. And so the efficient thing to do is usually to have everybody kind of collectively make decisions because, hey, everybody's collectively enjoying that same good. And so let's take a situation where, you know, you live in an apartment building and there's 10 people in your apartment building and you guys are deciding whether or not to hire a security guard. And let's say the security guard, you'd have to pay them a wage of $700. And let's say, each, uh, each of uh, you, all 10 of you, have this marginal benefit, meaning the benefit of one extra, you know, uh, security guard or something like that. So the question is, how many security guards should you guys hire for your apartment building? Now, if everyone's in making individuals on their, uh, dis individual decisions on their own, here's what's going to happen. You're going to think, hmm, should I hire a security guard for 700 bucks? Well, let's see. The first security guard would give me a benefit of hundred dollars so that's not worth paying him 700 second one that's even worse so you know at the end of the day you know, you're just not gonna hire any security guards right so that's that uh, all ten of you will think like that and you know then no security guards end up getting hired because you're kind of hoping that somebody else might do it and then be, you could be a free rider so usually in this case it makes sense to have a government or something equivalent so for example here you could decide to have like a, a board a co-op board or something for your apartment building who will then make decisions and so here's what they would do they would say all right What's our total benefit, right? The, as in the marginal benefit, you know, really for, for everyone. Because, and so here's the thing. Unlike in the past, where we would never add the marginal benefits for two different people, here we can because they're sharing the good. That's the issue here. For a private good like pizza, we'd never add your marginal benefit with their marginal benefit to figure out the equilibrium. We would add, in fact, the quantities, but here, they're sharing the good. So, you know, the same security guard would give all 10 people a $100 benefit each. So technically, the total benefit is $1,000. They should be willing to pay $1,000 in total for that security guard because everyone can chip in their own 100. So that means that the first security guard is now kind of worth it to hire because the wage is 700 and you can pull your money together and, uh, you know, the $1,000 is sort of worth it. Now, the second one would be 900 and so on. You could just multiply all these by 10. So here's the key. Whatever your marginal benefit is for every individual, multiply it by the number of people and then use that. Then you solve it the same way you'd solve any other problem. So here, once you multiply it by 10, it's the easiest problem ever where, all right, if it's $700, uh, how much is sort of a cost of a security guard? How many should we hire? First guy, sure. Second guy, sure. Third guy, sure. A fourth guy, it's on the border, but sure. But fifth guy, no. Even if you pull all of our $60 that we're willing to pay for the fifth guy, if you, if you, if you pull it all together, that's only $600, and it's not going to be worth it to cover the wage of $700. So the correct answer, then, the efficient thing to do would be to hire four security guards, which you can do through uh, government. Now let's take a look at a couple of student questions. What type of good is it if I were to watch a movie at a theater? Well, let's see. It's definitely excludable because you kind of have to pay to go into the theater assuming they can enforce security. So it's definitely excludable because, you know, you can prevent non-payers. Now, it's, it's kind of a, a tricky to the extent that it, to some degree you can kind of view it as non-rival in the sense that if there's a lot of empty seats, then, you know, it kind of doesn't, one person watching it doesn't affect the other. But really, if we're being technical, it's kind of rival because, you know, uh, it can get sort of filled up and, you know, so because of that, it, 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 it is more of a, 
a rival and excludable. So it kind of would be a private good then. Now, again, if you were kind of to extend that to Netflix where you have to pay to use it, but it really doesn't matter whether there's two people watching it or 300 million people watching it at the same time, that's truly non-rival. So this though, the theater would kind of be a private good. Now our final question. What if not everyone is willing to chip in for the public good? So one solution as we talked about to the public good was to have everybody chip in. And so if somebody doesn't want to chip in, well, here's the thing. We are making a lot of assumptions throughout economics. Part of the assumption in this, uh, in this part of it is that every individual is identical. So they are all willing to pay for it. And the other assumption is that it is kind of enforceable, meaning that if you are willing to pay for it, there's no reason you wouldn't pay for it, you know, if, if it's enforced, if you kind of have to, a part of the co-op board. Now, of course, in the real world, it's hard to even set up a co-op board for an apartment or something like that. And even then, it, there's a lot of issues of, like, people are not identical. Different people have different values. So do you charge everyone the same amount? Do you charge more to the people who are willing to pay more? And it gets a lot complicated. And so more economics, uh, more advanced economic classes sometimes explores uh, that. But for now, we can make those assumptions. And so uh, you would never have to deal with a problem like that for this course. Well, I hope you now understand economics better. And if you really want to make sure you've mastered the concept, check out our active learning customized platform at bestecontutor.com. It's like having a one-on-one -on -one tutor right in front of you 24-7. You can click here to try it out for free. And we'll be adding more topics and videos on YouTube, so make sure you subscribe below for the latest updates.